questions I kept getting were, when do you move the run, grip, pull, standards, all that stuff, etc. It's like, I know where to hold now, thanks for the video, but I don't know when to make adjustments. So this video is going to be called, Pole Vault Adjustments. Let's kind of do what we did last week with the whole flippy doodad thing. Pole Vault Adjustments. Now this is a pole vault pit. Hold on. This is a pole vault pit. That is a pole vault pole. Pole vault poles bend. Not like this is a pole vault pole. Pole vault poles can bend not much at all, just enough or too much. And your pole vaulter can land shallow, danger, right in the middle where you want to in the coaching box, or deep. Better than here, but still not the best. In high school, I found this chart by Earl Bell. Now, if you look closely, all you have to know is the pole bend and the peak landing where the athlete lands, and then it tells you your adjustments. So if the pole, pole bends too little and the athlete lands short, then the adjustment would be get to a softer pole. And you can do that for all everything on the list. So let's do the opposite side of the spectrum. The pole bends too much, the athlete lands deep, and you grab a stiffer pole. Simple, right? Now, Steve White has a chart which pretty much does the exact same thing. Where the pole vaulter landed and how much the pole bent. The only thing we're adding different, instead of standard changes, we're adding lengthier run. Because the way I coach, and my coaching philosophy has to do with, I would like to adjust the jump around the bar instead of adjust the bar around an ugly jump, if that makes any sense. So I kind of like to pick where the standards go and adjust my jump around that, unless it's really off and then you have to move the standards. So let's see how Steve White works. I always think it's easier if you color code it. So if we look at this, it's, it's the exact same thing, except you just, if there's matches, it's good. If there's not matches, it's bad. So let's say the vaulter lands too deep and the hole bends too much. So you take something out of this column, so you're like green and green match. Or, that, well, you could shorten the approach and shorten the approach. These options both work for this scenario. Or the vaulter lands too shallow and the pole bends hardly at all, you can also do both of these things depending on what you want to do. So if you don't like changing the length of your approach, then move to a softer pole. That's how it works. Hope that makes sense. Or let's say uh, the vaulter landed too shallow and the pole bends too much. Uh, so what do you do? No colors match here at all, so it would be lower grip, lower grip. Hope that makes sense. This is pretty easy, but it's way easier if you color code it. And so Steve White has a little bit more stuff on his chart that uh, the pole needs to bend 90 degrees or a little more. That's how he determines pole bend. And then uh, based on depth, you want to land four inches past the box, right in the center of the uh, coaching square. And that's how he determines everything. I put this guy with Earl Bell's chart on my Instagram. If you guys want to go download that, I will leave a link to. I just threw all my stuff on the ground. To Steve White's chart uh, in the description as well. If you guys want to download that, it's also on his website, flightdeckathletics.com, and it has all the instructions right here in case you forget how to do it. But color coding seems to work the best. All right. I hope that helped and I hope that uh, clarified a bunch of confusion in a lot of the emails I got. So if that makes sense and you think it could help your coach or you or anybody, please share the video and it could help me out a lot. See you later. Bye.